What's good, YouTube and Twitch? I am joined by Introduce All Yourselves, but not at once. And Cole Fonder Pounds here. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Boy, 10 out of 10 uh, intro. I am DZ, the smallest <laughs> channel here. Next in subscriber count is Nadir, I, am, uh, I guess. Glasgow I I am the second most irrelevant person here. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going on, guys? It's Timo. Glad to be here. So today we actually want to discuss a problem that a lot of people are complaining about and that's that six secret rares basically outweigh the average trade binder and three diagram and three ghost ash that a lot of people actually want to be playing but don't have access to. I know uh, the diagram goes towards one of uh, Nadir's favorite archetypes, true uh, Dracos. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to talk about dinosaurs here. <laughs> They're pretty pricey, too, because of diagrams. Uh, I just know Nadir totally hates Masterpiece and everything it stands for. You know, like, I, I was, at least at least a uh, budget dinosaur player got near the top yesterday without diagrams. That should make you a little bit happier, John, with Lost World instead. That's pretty cool. Well, that's usually what you see in, like, a new set drops the, like, very first weekend. There's still some people struggling behind with the old builds that might... I remember when... Uh, the second wave of Burning Abyss support came out. There was a guy that got a regional top with just like only running the originals, and he was like, "Okay, he was getting so then, a job done." I mean, let, let's make an argument here for argument's sakes for John. You know, like week one is that one window where you can before you have to actually get the stuff. So, I mean, a lot of people just kind of pass that opportunity. Yeah, this weekend's very interesting. I, I remember. Similarly, the Magician players tried when Full Power Pepe came out, but they all got demolished because people relatively quickly got uh, Pepe. So that weekend, it wasn't like Magicians were necessarily topping. But this one's kind of different, where it's so expensive. like, And, and it's similar, to, similarly expensive, but actually just a little bit more than back then. Maybe inflation, maybe just the excitement, maybe the missing secret John, rares out of boxes. John. I need, I need to bring up a point with you. My round one opponent yesterday sat down across from me, didn't have sleeves on his deck. Oh, dear. I, oh, no, it's even better than that. He's playing Invocation and all the, the good stuff with it, and he had two Ghost Ash without sleeves. Jesus, why? Yeah. <laughs> Did he just I, not finish I don't know, in but time? I, I got Ghost Ashed game two. No, dude, Like he's like, yeah, I just picked up everything. Guys, like, I, I don't have sleeves. I'm too poor. But yeah, he had two ghost ash. I wanted to slam my head into my fucking table. So let me let me provide an interesting point here. So at my case tournament yesterday, every single person, actually not every person, but I would say 90% of the people playing at the tournament either were playing True Draco Zoo, Pure Zoo, um, or had, like, ashes or diagrams, like, in their deck. And it wasn't a big tournament, but everyone who was there was playing with the best stuff to have the highest chance of winning because it's a case tournament. What ended up getting into the top eight was a pure Cosmo deck playing three Dark Eclipser because Dark Eclipser is actually a hard counter to Masterpiece because they can't out it with the trap, they can't target it, and it's 50 attack points higher if it's <laughs> either immune to spells or um, it, it's uh, they don't have the diagram in the first place. He played three True Draco Zoo and beat all of them in Swiss, and then he played a couple other decks as well, and made it to the top eight of the case tournament because he made a good meta call. He was not playing Ash, he was not playing Diagram, he was not playing Masterpiece or anything else. The most expensive card in his deck, I believe, was Solemn Strike at three copies. So... If you know how to read the meta and you can make a call like that, you know, you, that's actually a way you can effectively play in a format where that's not necessary. Now, it could have just been sheer luck because, you know, people haven't truly figured out how to play these decks, you know, correctly or things like that as well. But it's still just a good example of, you know, you can still play in a format very competitively, not needing to blow your wallet in doing so. Yeah, I think another interesting one that's similar is one of Robbie's favorite decks. At least it used to be. I don't know if it still is. And that's Zephra's. I actually just started to learn about how broken they were last night. And they're very good and they are relatively budget. I think there are options out there. But a lot of people are sticking to their, if you want to win, you need these, uh, it's a paywall. And I think the lowest paywall deck now, ironically, is Zoo. And Pure Zoo is still very viable. You know, there, there is... Oh, go on. No, I was, I was just saying, absolutely, Zoo. Pure Zoo was still... It was In the top four, it was two Pure Zoo and two, two Draco Zoo. And for, for Pure Zoo, all you need is 
Ash Blossom, arguably, if you're looking at the expensive stuff. But if you need to play true Draco Zoo, you not only need the Ash Blossoms, but then you also need the diagrams and the masterpieces on top of it. So, right. I mean, in addition to Barrage as well. So. Dinosaurs, too. Um, maybe I'm in a different situation because I brought I bought all the True King stuff like as it came out, so I didn't have to like pay for them. I know that the Fire one's pretty expensive right now, and the Earth one's like $5 or whatever. Um, but even like I can just see if I if I went to like a regional this weekend, I, I very well could see myself because like I already have my invite, so I don't care too much about spending a lot of money on cards right now. I will when Nats comes closer. Sure, but I could see just buying one or two diagrams, throwing them into like a, a regular old Lost World two, True Draco deck, and like easily getting an invite with that. I mean, you'll open diagram less than your opponent, but you can still have the Lost World and you still have the True Kings, and they can make rank nines and stuff. And it's like, do you need Ghost Ashes? Not necessarily. To, I think it's to be fair, obviously a really good card, and it makes your it makes winning easier. But it's not like you don't, you don't just lose for not having cards in your deck. To be fair, though, you you can be the 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 guy that wants to counter the meta, and you can just play Gamma. Like, you'll never get Ghost Ashes. <laughs> I mean, if, if you draw, I, I don't know. I I, I agree. <laughs> you have, you card I saw. Game, I, I I think I saw that actually uh, topped the regional, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I yeah. mean, Gamma was Infront. really big OCG for Max C, you know. Yeah. And being able to just get a free Omega out of it is already ridiculous. Yeah, I think I saw Trey post a joke picture about eh, you activate Ash to my grass. This is what happens. I mean, to to be fair though, if we're going into like a format progression where we're gonna see more like things like that, you know, there's your guys' counter to the meta. I also think um, the I less. Just... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was, I was just going to give, like, one extreme end of, like, this kind of spectrum of, like, the kind of argument. Um, so, like, everyone knows that, like, I'm not particularly happy with this format currently. And that's for You're many not? reasons. <laughs> that's to do with, like, I feel like that's to do with balancing issues. Um, but cost is a very important thing as well. So, mm -hmm. initially, the meta, I assumed it would probably be just be true Draco. And I feel like it will evolve into, essentially, just, like true Draco decks for the most part so really I'm not interested in playing that deck at all because of balancing reasons but also because of the fact that you do need to buy nine secret rares to make your deck um, complete uh, as well as the barrages and all this stuff etc that like I like to play true Draco which I feel is probably like the best deck um, so to play the best deck you are paying an absurd amount of money and then not to mention you might be siding something like the barrier and strike so that's way more money on top of that and then desires that's like that's a lot of insane like cost just for like a full deck right for like the best deck so i'm not interested in playing because of that reason um i feel like this set particularly is one of the most expensive formats uh to play like the best deck on the other hand you do have like a lot of like really uh, good budget options with dinosaurs um zephyrs uh, which are actually surprisingly really strong and I'm hoping Spirals will make a bit of an impact as well. So, I mean, I can. Um, I don't think it's like the worst format ever, but I just think that when you have something like Masterpiece, which is a format-defining card, um, your deck will probably need to play that card in some shape or form, and that requires a lot of secret rares that are just absurd, um, considering the fact that we had a case opened that didn't have any secret rares. Four cases. So that's essentially why I'm not interested in playing currently you know going back to a point that Simo made here though um along with something else i've heard this format though like the, the extremely competitive players will have their cards to play yeah. but that but that'll be that'll be the case every format yeah exactly I mean, no how, I mean no matter how expensive it is but i think nadir makes a good point where like i mean i don't really because when i looked at this going into before this video was being made i was like well that's you have to drop like six hundred ish dollars if you want to build true Dracos on the nine secret rares, whatever. But Nadir just pointed out, and what I wasn't thinking about was that not everyone has already had like D barriers and desires and demise and stuff like that, where like overall costs because I already have gotten the stuff that's older, but a lot of the older stuff is still expensive and if you're doing the whole deck from scratch, like let's say you jump back in the game right now, then you'd be looking at spending like a grand up front and that that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you like, took any one kind of break. Deck. 
coming back in right. would be and super I'm not thinking difficult. of that because it's, it's hard. I mean, I've gotten so much mileage out of like potted desires and stuff, and I, I don't know if Dragonic Diagram will last that long. I think it's probably, I mean, this isn't a balanced discussion, but I feel like it, its value will probably tank sooner just because I feel like it will be hit sooner than desires. But like, I don't, I don't know if I would invest in this deck brand new if I was like getting back in the format and I was a competitive player from like even a couple years ago. I mean, if you even look at like full power Pepe, it wasn't really at this level. I mean, all the new stuff was expensive, but most of the old stuff besides Luster Pendulum and Ignister I think you, weren't like I think you're under, $50. I think secrets. you're underestimating the fact of Link format. You know, like, yeah, that'll that... be good up through September, you know? Well, it's still dominating well, is, in if you Japan. Look at OCG, like, yeah, yeah like, exactly. OCG, like, they're all still playing like so the my I, I think what Robbie is saying is the mileage will still be there past. Uh, yeah, like oh, I, I was just assuming that it would like get hit. No, there's, they gotta there's no they gotta sell to them it. 2018 megaton somehow, DZ. Yeah, there's no this reason why they would hit. Yeah, 2018 is when we get the reprint for Diamond. Oh, 2018, yeah, so yeah 2018. 2018. Yeah, like I don't, I, I don't think that's a fair statement when you consider like Shadals were a big seller of the Megatons, and then that got hit right afterwards. Like I don't think that's exactly. I'm, I'm saying you gotta sell the tents. Uh, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> so let me let me jump off of Doug's point here. So he said he mentioned the cost of like the deck if you were to build the deck from scratch. Like say you were picking up the game competitively again, but you didn't have anything. But like say YCS Pittsburgh's coming up, right? Yeah. Let's say you wanted to play in that event and you've been practicing online. You just need to get the cards. So obviously, throwing out that kind of money for an event is something to consider. But you do need to consider as well. Let's say you have the money available. You could pick up all the cards, go to Pittsburgh, and then the event ends, and then you could just sell all the cards because cards like Diagram and Ash Blossom are not going to be going down in value anytime soon. <laughs> Especially hey, so within the like same we, weekend. It, so even it's like if, we've talked about that before. I know, right? So, <laughs> But my point is, even if you go, and let's say you bought the deck for a grand, and let's say you only managed to sell the cards back for like 900 you paid 100 bucks to essentially play in an event. That's no different than like going to the movies, paying $15 to watch the movie, and then you know, you're not getting that money back either. You got your entertainment, so like that loss you took on buying the cards is almost like the value of being able to play in an, in, you know, an activity you enjoy playing in yeah it's it's just this time it's a much deeper pocket reach it's one that oh sure yeah yeah on just top don't go of, to the bank and take out a yeah. loan uh, and to <laughs> on top on top of the travel cost on top of that too like you said it's a player who's very confident they will do well so first they're going to be paying travel costs on top of that and of course the more friends you have the cheaper travel is like me billy and jackie we looked at flights again and we're like well we're driving 18 hours it it does come down to a lot of your dedication as well but it's are you guys really gonna drive 18 yeah hours? easy peasy that's oh, that's i've driven to california three times this, and that's this man over 22 crazy yeah it's <sighs> nuts so let, let me bring up one other point too so another good friend of ours nim nim um he's going to pittsburgh um i believe he's only going to be spending maybe the money it costs to buy ash because he's getting everything else lended to him by his shop or friends of his so that's another way if you want to play in this format. If you've got a lot of friends who have the stuff, yeah, that just get don't rich mind. Go exactly. to the if they, if they trust city, you enough to lend you the stuff, teach them how to play Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, here is the thing though. Typically, when you're like, hey, I'm, I really want to go to YCS and you talk to your friends, and there's only locals that weekend or even a regional, typically they'll go for the greater good of the cause and be like, you're playing in a YCS. This is serious. Like, I trust you. As long as you're like a reputable person who can give some kind of collateral or something for these very expensive cards, typically they will allow you to borrow them for that cause they're not going to be like oh i'm going to play in locals and win this week and i need it like if there's a case tournament yeah. that's one thing because you purposely bought the cards to return on your investment but with the ycs on the line typically your friends will be like yeah sure i got your back and that's that's kind of the point of why a team typically splits a case because some people will have work that weekend and some won and you know, between the team you usually get together what you want for the most part so here's the issue i take with that point like i i completely understand like you know you could potentially make an initial investment um and then like you sell everything back after the event um which is fine i personally will never do that again because konami released a ban list uh, on my flight back home from prague so you know, I'm, 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 I'm not i'm not doing that again um but like if we kind of like have to look at it from the vast majority of the player base like most 
like the bulk of the Yu-Gi-Oh player base aren't people who travel to YCSs. So really, people are looking to pick up decks that they can play week in and week out um, for a good few months, you know, twice a week or however many times that they go to locals every week, regionals and stuff. That makes up the bulk of the player base. And realistically, in that situation, you're not going to be able to, you know, borrow cards and stuff because you're going to be playing against the people you'll be borrowing from, like from locals to locals. Like you just kind of want to like go uh, weekly and like play your decks against friends and practice together. So that like applies to YCSs, but I mean, for you know, speaking on behalf of the like the majority of the player base. Sure. Um, yeah. You can't you can't just borrow from like other people. Yeah. This and is this is a very you... good point that I actually wanted to talk about too. I feel like there is a point where there is. I feel like on a local level there is a pay to win, but then once you head towards YCS, that goes away. Towards the more competitive events, pay to win goes away because there's so many more people in the room with that same kind of level of a like ability of cards that then you're clashing with the same amount of money and decks, and it's no longer pay to win on the that level but can, the local can I, level can i disagree can i disagree with the pay to win statement i got 33rd yesterday and i had everything <laughs> that's that's what i'm <laughs> that's exactly what i'm saying uh, the 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 larger of an event you go to the less it can possibly happen uh i, the, I think there's points really good though just in general because like that's why it's so much of the like older max rarity stuff or even higher rarity versions of like like, are so relevant and are so good to hang on to because, like, these people that are playing, I mean, even before Minerva came out and stuff like that, all the Lightsworn stuff was pretty expensive just because, I mean, I know people that go to my old locals that would just play, like, Lightsworns every single week. And, like, over time, they, like, eventually max raried it out. And it was like, well, why aren't you buying new cards? Like, you're sucking at regionals. And, like, well, I'm gonna go to, only going to regionals, like, once every couple months where, like, I want to play in locals with, like, shiny cards. And, like, I think that shows sort of a middle ground. Usually we think of the extremes of, like, a hyper-casual player that doesn't have any money or, like, a really competitive player that, like, doesn't care how much money they spend. I feel like there's a middle ground of people, like Nadir is saying here, that are playing regularly in locals but have no need to invest in the higher cards because locals is only five bucks. Why waste some money on the top-tier deck? I think that's a pretty good point. <laughs> Awkward silence, but uh, that's that's what she said. Yeah, leading you leading. Have to, like realistically, you do have to just look at it from the perspective of the majority of the player base, and and the majority of the player base aren't people who, um, you know, like a lot of players do play competitively. Like even like people say like you know like even casuals like are like still playing competitively. You know they're just not investing into like you know the the be all end all meta decks, but you know they're yeah. still trying to win like week in and week out or, like do their best with you know whatever they can put together i feel and like the people who they... invest heavily early are typically people that like simo here that has a case tournament something that they can actually attempt to win and back and that's why you would that's why even pre-sale prices and those back, kinds of things actually happen like the way they back do. onto a back onto like piggybacking off of something that you said earlier though but like you know investing in cards week one and planning to sell them on like the way home can fuck you but there's the opposite side where if you don't pick them up early you might have a draco sack on your hands where it's like doubled in price after sneak peek tour guide desires all of them started relatively I, low to their I, end yeah prices. ghost ash started at 70 on pre-sales for what's it called and i paid 70s at sneak and now they're what 80 90 85 right now uh yeah ycs weekend they're gonna be pushing 100 yeah it'll be really hard so, to get them in that room vendors gotta make that juice 100 a pop Ninety nine, ninety nine. Konami rules. Say, there's gonna be ninety nine. Ninety nine, ninety nine. Would you like your penny back? <laughs> I they have to actually give it back. I know vendors that specifically get pennies because of that stuff. <laughs> oh. oh man, the, the struggle over here. You know, like spending ninety nine, ninety nine on a ghost ash is more of a struggle to get the penny back afterwards and realize what you've done. <laughs> penny for your thoughts. Yeah, literally, here you go. Dude, my my friend walked into the event, though, and he bought three Ghost Ash for yesterday. And, you know, like, it, it considering what it is, like, if you're planning on playing, I think you need to do it. And, like, I don't want to trash on any competitive or casual players at the moment, but, like, it's, if you're planning on playing, it's something you need. Another I interesting... I don't so much need Diagram. 
Another interesting thing on what it's done to the set, uh, Masterpiece has fallen fastly from 40 to 30. Every other card in the set, because of those two, are insanely affordable. Uh, and I think because they're affordable, like, it's it's a really interesting place to be right now. Hey, hey John, ring ring. What's up? Uh, Kaiju's called. Hey. That's why Masterpiece <laughs> is falling. So, but here, here's a question, though. So, would you attribute the fact that these cards are so expensive regardless of the fact of the whole you know lack of secrets in a lot of the cases or are they would they still be this price regardless i think they would be a little lower uh there, there would definitely be, there's there's multiple places now besides pro play i know jaquin uh posted that he had eight boxes out of 11 opened in his case with no secrets and he filmed eight of them uh, I know that I've heard from, I think Dalton Warren's store uh, had a case without secrets as well. So it's not just a one place thing and there's been no response yet, but I I think okay. it does attribute a little to it and also the scare to now go and open your product. People people who pre-ordered already pre-ordered. I think at most, I think at most it affects the prices by 50 cents. I, I agree think you're with severely, you. severely overestimating how much of an impact those... 20 boxes i mean even then you said like two cases so yeah around 24 boxes i think you're severely overestimating how much of an impact i has. i think it and makes... also Konami doesn't have to respond because in the article that they posted that people keep quoting the thing that they put in parentheses that everyone glosses over is the fact that they said that over millions of packs it evens out and you know on that same day that ppg posted their box opening i saw five other people post on zodiac that pulled three secrets and mm -hmm. you don't have to have a case that pulls like double secrets you just have to have enough casual players i mean there's there's thousands of players zodiac is so small comparatively to the whole player base there's thousands of players and all it takes is a couple hundred of them well less than a couple hundred just 50 of them to pull one extra secret in their one box that they bought and that evens out and yeah it sucks that people got fucked on rng but like realistically we're talking millions of packs here so no they're the <laughs> the missing 50 secrets from the thousands in print right now i don't think that affected the price at all I mean, maybe it affects people not buying boxes, but realistically, I still see people buying boxes all the time anyway. Yeah. So it's like, I don't, I don't know. John. I think that's I think that's unrealistic, and I think you should realize that's unrealistic. I, I've had comments of people that literally said they were going... I know these comments happen too either way, but there were people that were saying, I was going to go buy something, and then they're saying, now I'm not going to after seeing this, and I'm going to wait. Right, and that's, and that's why I brought it up, because I know there are some people that think like oh because the secrets are missing from the boxes even though they do even out eventually i know people are going to have that mindset like that's why these cards are so expensive no that's not the reason why they're expensive they're expensive because they're meta defining cars <laughs> right right okay but but see simo and john you two are missing two important points here and simo i'm, I'm going to shake my finger at you here all right so <laughs> two two big things here all right simo i'm pointing my finger at you number one there's a big ycs coming up <clears throat> barrage did the same shit all right. after and it takes immediately releases. after. Yes, and you know what else is going to happen to this set? You guys are only catering to the people right now that want to buy their stuff immediately. Calm down, people. This set also has a reprint coming and unlimited printing. You know that special yep. edition coming out soon? Mm -hmm. So I think Ghost Ashes are going to dip under... Uh, I think, what, 55, 60 seems fair for what they are. I mean, it's definitely better than Barrage. And I, I think Diagram's going to tank, too. Yeah, but all this the... discussion only really applies early. I would, I would agree with that, but there's one thing that's different. So when Barrage was released at Sneak Peek, they were only going for, like, 45s and, like, 50s. They were not selling for, like, 90s and 80s, like Ash and, uh, and Diagram were, because I don't know if it's because people didn't realize how good the Zodiac engine was at the time, but I remember because I got my whole playset at Sneak Peek for 45s a piece, and ever, a lot of other people did as well, and then immediately upon release and the week after, because Seattle was following, that's why I needed to get everything, that's when they jumped up to the massive price that they were. So, yeah, but then after Seattle, boom. Yeah, all, no, they came back. They came back down, but because there was Atlanta right after Seattle, though, too. All so. of the Ghost Reaper slash uh, Ghost Ogre cards hit sixty-ish level out at one point, and then went back down, I believe. Uh, but Ash is by far the best out of all three, arguably. Like Ogre oh, sure. has its times where it comes in and out. Ash does so much more; it's ridiculous. 
I agree, but the point is, though, they're not going to stay where they are for very long. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be... A, we haven't even hit the mass release. That's happening. That happened this weekend, actually. So uh, it's, we should start to right, see it's that It's ongoing. Effect. Yeah. And, right. and then, I mean, like you said... I'm going to in two months and laugh about the prices that we're looking at here. And then, like... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I paid ninety dollars for diagram. Fuck. Yeah, and then the special editions uh, have always been cool. And for some reason, there's uh, I think because of lightning, there's a rumor that it's Europe only, but it's on the U.S. product list, I believe. With uh, with you, it's Utopic Zexel as the, one of the promos and Kachi Kochi Dragon. Uh, so that the oh, Europeans, Kachi Kochi, so weird. yeah, well, so the Europeans can have both finally. And uh, there's a lot of rumors that it's Europe only, like lightning, but I believe it's slated for our product list as well. So, I'm not sure about Diagram, but I feel like Ash is going to retain its value because I, I'm looking at, like, Desires when it was released because Desires was a pretty much dedicated three of in every single deck at that time. And Ash is pretty much following suit because it's pretty much like if you're playing this game competitively, it's pretty much a staple three of no matter what because it just it's just that powerful of a card. Huh, I don't, yeah, it seems I like don't Ash's see is Desires and Diagram is Barrage. That'd be the easiest comparison. Yeah, that's actually a really good comparison. Unending so John, Nightmare has jumped $6 today. That's interesting. John, so hear me out here for a minute. So the week to pick up Ghost Ashes, if you're not planning on playing this format, would be the week after Nationals. Because everyone's going to immediately drop their ship, mm -hmm. and players are going to be preparing to go into Link format, which, quote-unquote, would bury Ghost Ash underneath, because a lot of people are going to be like, we don't need it. So if you want Ghost Ashes, then why not just hunker down and wait till post-WCQ? I think you got to get to worlds. <laughs> yeah, I think I think no one in this chat's going to worlds except for maybe Simo. I <laughs> when you get there. I think True Draco will still be super relevant for the beginning of Link format, and thus Ash will. Yeah, still Yeah, but be that's what I'm saying. You, for, you forget, John. Do you know how many people jump ship at? Oh like, yeah, yeah Val. Like, I remember Val like I saw, dipped I, and came back up so hard. Dude, I Some people literally only pay for a national season. Like people literally just get cards, play nationals, and then if they don't make it to worlds, like you won't see them until like next year. That happens yeah, all the time. Yeah, they're like peace you know, out. And the and the thing with Link format as well coming is like in over an OCG, like they have all these broken cards like Firewall Dragon, um, and people are still playing True Draco because it's like, oh look at me, I'm doing Firewall combos for ten minutes. Oh shit, I still can't outlast a piece. Like, <laughs> people know that deck's like just so good. And yeah, it will be so good here for like the, for the foreseeable future. When Nationals is over, the best term for it is the show's over. Basically, Worlds is all that's left, and it's a completely different format. It's uh, it definitely drops off. Yeah, because until then, there's no more regionals or any big events until like when, like September, October. Yeah, I think it's like depending, depending on where you live. I mean, uh, some people get them second week of August. Yeah, I usually okay. get one in August. That's oh, in Ohio, okay. pretty much every But again, year, it's, but it's very dependent on where you live. It's like a month and a half break, though. Right, and that's a very significant time because at that point, it's like, well, if I'm not going to have to play for this long, then a lot of people just dump off their cards. And yeah. this happens every year. And then especially with the Megatons coming as well, this everything just becomes super cheap. And then once things start picking back up again, that's when you start seeing card prices rise. It's like it's like every year it's the same fucking thing. You should be picking up after Nationals for the cheap format, right? Yeah, as long as it's not in the Megatons. You forget, like, we always go, like, there's been very few exceptions every year that we know that the formats going into nationals are going to be extremely expensive. And this is no, like no different, you know, like today we're making this video talking about card prices it being high before national season, but immediately afterwards it's, we enter into reprint season and everything tanks, you know, I, it's only because like Nadir said, you know, everyone's coming in for national season, college is done. People are like, all right, it's time to play Yu-Gi-Oh. So. so basically, if you plan to play in Nats, it sucks, and if and that's over two thousand duelists, I think now for two years in a row. Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, like a random like side point. Like I feel like if we, I, I just like I just wish Konami would try it once, where they just give us a set like OCG, where they just make all these insanely good cards. Like they just make them supers and rares and stuff, and then just see like if people still buy their product. Because I feel like people will still. Their product will still sell out, even if masterpieces are super and diagrams I, are rare. It's like, I feel like they tried that with the the set with dragon rollers, and look what happened there. What happened? Not yeah. quite though, because Draco know. Sack was secret. Uh, yeah, Draco Sack was, was in like, there. Eternity was like I don't know. I I always bring up this comparison 
brought it up in like every podcast, but there was like Secrets of Eternity that had no. But that didn't even have good like, cards. Chase cards, but it had like good cards. It just didn't have like chase no, it cards. Didn't, Shadow Spectre was one of the worst selling product ever. What well, Cyber Dark Impact? If you want to talk about a terrible set that had all the good cards, low rarity, like look, Vanity's Fiend, fucking Instant Fusion were commons. The rest Instant of the set Fusion, was shit. Dragon Spear, that well? all the barriers. Black Horn was a rare. No, yeah, I think yeah, Cyber Dark Cyber Dark Impact was the worst selling set in all of. Yeah, there's history. A, there there's a vendor that was still going to uh, YCSs. That uh, every single YCS, he would ha just have a load of them, and people finally bought them out for, for when Instant Fusion was still high as a common. Yeah, it took dude, that, that was long. professional event services. Yeah, he he had yeah. a he had just a mountain of it left over from the era. Dude, where we it would didn't we sell. would be taking the we'd we'd buy six packs, spend ten dollars, and see if we could pull the ultimate black horns out of that set. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that was a times. sad selling set. No, but but Cyber Dark Impact's a perfect example of I, I I think what Nadir would be getting at though, like all the good cards were low base rarity, Vanity's Fiend, Instant, Black Horn, and all the quote unquote like anime cards were ultras and whatnot, right? Yeah. Shadow Spectre only had Felgrand and Alucard, if I'm not mistaken, that were initially wanted. I mean, uh, okay, so like I don't think that uh Secrets of Eternity necessarily had like, like a bunch of bad cards i mean it had all the infernoids and they're pretty good and cliffort monolith and like yeah but at the time they like were that. they were underwhelming that's when blaster like, was still out and uh it, it took a while like if they just release a set where all the good cards like and there's going to be a very powerful deck but they just happen to be a little rarity like i feel like people would still buy their product because in the end like oh i could just buy a box and i could potentially put together my deck you know yeah, I think a good Let example of that, would that be, uh, like the perform age, perform yeah, perform ages were all common and people bought a shit ton of the set that they came out in. But that I was, think that's what Nadir's getting at is like Nadir's like getting at so like let's say hypothetically if they made masterpiece, ghost ash, and diagram all supers, but like in the OCG, what's cool that they do is that you, you can also get them in secret. So, but it's like the rarer rarity of it. So. It's mm -hmm. still very accessible, even though Ghost Ashes there are still like very expensive for the Japanese market anyway. But it's still widely accessible to people. But then at the same time, like you know, if you're trying to get like you know highest rarity, you can pay a little bit extra and get your secret rare form. But it's still widely accessible. I mean, you look at other card games, like they they do not have cards this expensive for their current like formats. Like obviously, like really old Magic the Gathering cards obviously are super expensive. But like their current like standard format. The, the cards they release, like, the most is, like, maybe $20, $30. Magic, and, like, we have $95 cards. Like, it's absurd. Magic uh, Magic and Force of Will, I believe, also have uh, the, the low rarity and then the high rarity versions of cards, too, right? I'm, I mean, but, going on this logic, why don't we just make another Noble Knight box set? Oh, oh God. That <laughs> because also that's what well. introduced Platinum Rare into the game. I mean, seeing the machine <laughs> because, like... That's that's why it was so much better. I mean, maybe not objectively better, but that's why I liked it a lot. Not only when we had ultra and ultimate rares, because that lowered the price of them. Like there were time construct was usually lower priced than Winda back in Shadals because like there were two printings of it. But even back in the day when there was every every single rare and super and ultra were all printed as ultimate rare, mm -hmm. it gave people a way to get them cheaply, but also max rarity them out. And uh, obviously, it's like really expensive for Konami to print, which is why they stopped printing ultimate rares and packs. Yeah, but they but, need to fix that shit. They need to go back to ultimates. Like it, it that kind of solves the so problem. Much. I mean, if, if Diagram was a rare and or even a super and an ultimate rare, you'd have a really expensive version and then a cheap version, and both players could have what they want. Exactly, it could... it satisfies both the casual, actually not even just the casual, but it satisfies the anyone who wants to play that deck. And then there's the rarity whores who want to have it max rarity, so it satisfies. It satisf satisfies their needs as well but it, it solves the issue of making it more widely accessible to everyone and lowering the price and that's still going to sell them a ton of product because everyone still needs these cards that doesn't change that fact i think that is a pretty happy solution i mean it's just like ots packs integrated into actual sets basically i mean that's kind of what we're seeing like terror top now it has like a really dirt cheap printing sort of a and then the ultimate rare, which is expensive. Do you think they should just make the ultimate rares even harder to get then? I don't know. Like make like, make I, the I like other cards a lot. So like I, I just yeah. want them. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to play devil's advocate here. But 
isn't it uh isn't it the bullshit of our generation to have it be their god-given right to have access to everything fairly like how dare you tell me that i can't have ultimate rares when i should be able to get them like yeah it's like if you want to get them <laughs> then fork it up like, but there's there's the other version accessible to almost everybody yeah, it's like how dare you tell me i have to play peasant rarity i deserve to play the same rarity as that guy across the table like I don't think anyone generally like would feel that way. I think like oh, the middle yeah, ground. You'd like, be surprised. I think like the middle I, I ground. I think if you, you I don't feel the way at all. I think like the middle ground <laughs> would be like you know where Simo was saying where you know I, I want access to this deck, um, and I want to be able to play this deck at events and play it regularly with my friends at locals and stuff. But you know for those who want to max out their deck and that is quite a lot of people. A lot of people do care about rarity. Then they have that option as well to play more, and I feel like it's a win-win for everyone. And you know, Konami still sells product, and players still get to play good decks. And those who want to max out their decks can also pay a little bit extra and buy more product, and they can get their set of ulti diagrams or whatever. You know, <laughs> any opportunity for Konami to widen the accessibility of this game to like to their audience is a good thing for them because that means more people are going to be playing their game and that means more people are going to end up buying their product so by doing that it just it just i feel like that's the ultimate middle ground where everybody wins and because i i really think that this is a very hostile you know issue where these every set that's coming out now there's just cards like this that are this expensive and it's just it's becoming harder and harder and much larger of a barrier for people to play, especially on a competitive level, but then also dissuades even younger players who want to get good at the game. But, you know, if they don't have full-time jobs or anything like that, I mean, is that their fault that, you know, if they're 14 and in high school and they don't have enough, they don't have $100 to pay for a copy of Diagram? Like, that's not their fault. Yeah, yeah I can remember back in high school not being able to afford, like, the two biggest cards that I couldn't afford were... Uh, Zen mains and solemn warning like those were like huge cards that I felt you needed to be competitive like obviously tour guide but even without tour guide like you'd want like Zen mains because like it was just like a good generic rank three and like in high school like I, I never got a Zen mains or a warning until they got reprinted it's like I understand there's a pretty big audience of like high schoolers I mean that's probably I don't even know percentage wise how much of the Yu-Gi-Oh community that takes and up but I would say pretty large and they can't afford any of these cards really unless they're under like Fifteen dollars. I would piece. say and even a, then, it's hard just to find spending that much money on one single card when you're making like fifty dollars a month. Right. I would say it's a lot harder for kids to trade overall too, not just through intimidation, but like they don't have their own means of transport. If dad's working this weekend, then he and every something fucking happens to... asshole in this game is a fucking floor vendor now. That's what makes <laughs> trading so fucking hard. <laughs> but but as I'm also saying, like let's say that let's say a ban list is heading out and dad works this weekend, they can't get to locals to trade, and there goes the increased or uh, drop in value, and they're not going to be able to trade for the new cards again until they save up allow or whatever means of earning money they have like so uh, again also with the issue of getting stuck quote unquote like kids can have it a lot worse too but so here's the thing as well to go on with that so going back to our whole our whole example here if we made diagram and ash supers that means that there's going to be so many more of them available which are not only is it going to bring the price down in terms of accessibility but that also means they're going to be much easier to be traded for for other trades that the, that you know the younger audience is going to have because that's the thing a little like not a little kid but like a younger kid might think oh i might be able to trade for like a card like asher diagram and it's very very hard for them to do that because most of the time people who get these cards are looking for either the money or they're looking for something that's of equal value that these younger players don't necessarily have because the only thing that's worth that might be you know the deck that they're currently playing that they already have they might not have you know excess I don't so know, that's, like, tough, though. Do you think that the little kids, like, I don't know, my experience, little kids really just don't give a fuck about any of these expensive cards. They just want, like, what the deck that they're playing. So, like, yeah, maybe there's, like, some kids that are, like, in high school and, like, care about these, like, cards. But I, I think, Shout out to I don't know, in my experience, what I've seen is they just want, like, a Spellbook of Tower and will trade you, like, their whole binder for it. Because, like, they want to play Spellbooks. I don't know. Shout out to I guess what I'm saying is, though, is that partial is that partially in responsibility though because of the fact that these cards are so expensive that they're forced to play other decks i'm not saying there aren't people that aren't you know loving their black wings or their spell books or you know whatever you know decks they're playing 
I'm coming at the point from, are, is that, like, do they want to play these other decks, but because they're so expensive, they're just like, oh, well, I'll just stick, you know, with my Fire Fist or, you know, what other deck they're playing at the moment. I, I just think they actively pick cards that they like playing versus cards that are necessarily good against the meta. Like, maybe sure. they can afford Strike, but they play, like, they choose to buy, like, Fire Fist, like you said. And I sure. think in that case, they just don't care about these I yeah, I, 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 think, I don't know. I, I picture people that just go to locals yeah, all the time. There, there's all walks of life. There's going to be the kid that wants to get competitive. There's the kid that's just looking at locals and wants to play in that locals and wants to play something different that weekend. So trades everything. There's there's all sorts of people that may play this game and not to make a that's what makes this game great phrase, but there there are just all sorts of people that play and I, either I mean, character. We had a we had a guy at Locals that has pretty much everything in the meta, and he chose to play Glider Beast at Locals last week. His reason? Because I wanted to. You know, like... Yeah. I know. I'm just... I'm just. I, I'm looking broadly in terms of, you know, wide accessibility, I guess. <laughs> I think, like, a lot of reason that, like, you find some people who are like, oh my god, meta sheep, like, everyone's playing the same deck and stuff, is like, one, um, you know, maybe they are generally just trying to be unique, and they want to build their own deck themselves without, like, you know, quote-unquote net decking and stuff like that. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, it could be accessibility. Like, you know, if the people who complain about the meta and stuff could actually access the meta and didn't have, like, such a high paywall to get into the meta, like, from buying, like, absurdly expensive cards that are all right. super rare, they might be okay with, like, you know, playing meta if it meant that they could actually access it. Well, that was like the whole thing with desires and people like they're like at least with diagram we don't have people like arguing that it's, it's like a minus one like that's good, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with desires like the, you the you pissed your ash blossom from like, hand that's pretty bad huh ash, ash blossom is a minus one guy yeah you're but starting with five cards with, dog at least with desires I mean that's that's all you saw was people that couldn't afford it saying that it was bad and it's like thank god we don't have that this time but still yeah i mean if those i i think a lot of the people that that could afford they could have afforded it, like the deer is saying here i think they wouldn't have hated it so much i don't think we would have had that argument i mean i'm sure some people would have i've certainly had people that commented on my videos saying you know i tested the deck, i activated desires once and i drew desires so i never played the card again and yeah there's nothing you know about those people but i i think when a deer is saying about well if you just gave them a chance to like play it at an event yeah they'd probably like it so that's kind of a yeah For, i genuinely know i genuinely look genuinely know two people that, that as, when desires was like at 80 to 90 we're saying it's the worst card ever and then when it came back down to 40 they're now playing three of it so <laughs> got him <laughs> yeah so no, that's no. just that's just to pretty much supplement nadir's point that's exactly how i feel i almost feel that some of these players who you know kind of look that that whole casual versus competitive you know clashing of heads that i feel like if maybe if that paywall weren't there that would actually kind of diffuse some of that tension and maybe those players would be more like not so hostile towards the competitive players and maybe be like oh so you know i can play these cards and oh this is why these cards are cool i get it now so i, I don't know i think one other good thing to have that doesn't necessarily phase out and isn't necessarily the best deck either are things that people keep as decks that just live throughout formats like Gladiator Beast used to, which currently would be BA and Mermail Atlanteans. They just seem to, every single format, spottily top here and don't, there. Don't trigger me, John. Uh, don't, uh, don't do this. All right, so DZ, <laughs> how, how, like, what do you, do you think your Burning Abyss decks would have any realistic sort of chance, like, in this kind of a meta? Yeah, I mean, not to, like, self-plug, but I did just post a BA deck profile and, like, I said in that video, I'm pretty sure that you could just, like, take this deck and, like, easily get an invite at a regional in the next couple weeks. Just because, like, you just play against so much garbage at regionals until, like, the very last rounds. And that's just, like, honestly, like, the truth. Like, even the people that have, like, the best deck, maybe they are sort of inexperienced with it. Where, like, maybe at the very top tables, everyone has, like, the best cards. But when you're, like, I mean... Getting your invite is so fucking easy. Like, you can just take whatever. I think if you, like, put the time and effort and, like, I would say to anyone that maybe jumped out of the game and is getting back into it that has Burning Abyss Phantom Knights, like, you can just sack people with it. I mean, floaters are still good. You can just kaiju, just play a lot of kaijus and draw them or whatever. I've, and it's like, I've, I, I don't know if with Mermails it's so the I same. I you're not working with, like, awesome. Dude. <laughs> Like, I, I, I just draw them. I, oh, thanks. I, never wanted just to draw. I wasn't yeah. drawing like. Oh, well, at least you can also mill slumber with the the, the deck also. 
DZ says it's so easy to get an invite, but I'm just over here. Uh, another honestly. thing that is the point, even with uh, Ash Blossom running around, the less 60 d card decks there are, the more powerful they get. If that makes so, sense. Like, Ash yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Ash kind of thrown into the mix. <laughs> it, it definitely hurts them, but again, like uh, like that cute gamma option, and then uh, I, it's also not once per turn. There's there's just the the less sixty card decks there are, the the more of a chance that you're gonna end up playing more forty card decks because of it. That's also true because uh, mathematically, you have a forty two percent chance to open grass and only a thirty four to open ash. So, um, like on average, people sixty card decks are gonna open grass more often than the opponent's gonna have the ash blossom to stop it. Wait, what? Are you factoring left after... arm offering? Huh? Are you factoring left arm offering? Yeah, yeah, it's forty two. Per... It's one in si it's one in six in a sixty card deck is forty two percent, and one in three okay. in a in a th in a forty is uh thirty four percent. So I thought you were just like doing like the straight math, and I was like, uh, Simo, I think you got this. <gasps> no, no, I put in the left arm sense. offering for that. <laughs> yeah. Does left arm offering left banish arm. as a cost, or does it after yes. resolution? Okay. Well, let's ask Peter Chang about left arm. Oh, oh, does yeah, left arm? It just hurts <laughs> your hands. And then it adds future fusion. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Discard your Be head. Peter, but Peter Chang is the kind of guy though that <laughs> searches for uh, future fusion. So, the, so the side frame <laughs> wouldn't protect left arm, but the side frame would protect uh, grass, I suppose. I love how John just moved on. <laughs> 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 uh, Swerve. <laughs> I was just continuing my line of thought, guys. I don't want a red gadget search future fusion anymore. Yep. Well, <laughs> on that note, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce. But it was fun discussing with All you right, guys. I, I think this is a pretty good place to end it. Any final notes, guys? Um, good job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 get a job or like cut off an arm and leg and sell your kidney on the black market if you want to play this format hey kidney's not the worst idea huh i think me and dz <laughs> need to keep those though remember remember guys there are there are plenty of alternatives but Yu-Gi-Oh is pay to win pay to play i was gonna say there's 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 plenty of budget alternatives that you can use to technically hard counter the meta but just because you have a hard counter to the meta don't don't expect that you're going to just automatically win a regional because you have a very solid counter to the meta. Or or Keep don't expect don't expect to also just play meta. You're going to run into other people just like right. yourself. Exactly. Just just keep that in mind, but I mean, ultimately play whatever, you know, you can afford and what you have fun playing and just, you know, have fun with the game is the best you can. Yeah.